Hi, today I thought we'd have a look at the case that I've been making for the LED ring light and this is what I've come up with so far in FreeCAD but there's only so much you can kind of do on the PC before you really need to print it out and just see how things fit in it. So this is the general design. It's a little bit rough around the edges at the moment. I do need to refine it but basically this is where we're going to insert it onto the microscope. We've got the three grub screws like we did before and then there's going to be an LED in each corner and we've got a piece that's cut out of each one that's for the heat sink to poke through and then if we flip it around you can see the LED boards are going to fit in here and then the main PCB is going to mount to these four bosses just here. So what I really want to do now is just try and print this out and just see how it's all going to fit together or see if I need to make some adjustments to this design to make it usable. So to actually print it out today we're going to be using a new device to me this is the Creality 3D Ender 3 and Banggood sent it to, to me to have a look at and show in one of my videos and so we'll see how it actually performs. Now I think we might have some struggles with this because of the design there's not really any flat surface that is going to sit against the bed so basically when we sit it down you can see this part is the part that's going to sit against the bed but everything else is going to need support structures to hold it in place so I don't know whether we should try and print it with this bit in contact with the bed or flip it over and print it the other way around. I think uh, either way we're going to end up with quite a lot of support structure and probably as a consequence it's going to take quite a long time to print. So I've decided to print it the other way up so that all the finished surfaces are the ones that are finished by the machine so we should have nice smooth surfaces on all of these top areas here and I've set it up in Creality Slicer for the Ender 3 and it reckons it's going to take about 22 hours to print using normal print quality. So quite a bit of material going on here, 163 grams. So let's save it to the SD card and go over to the Ender 3. So this is going to be my first print with the Ender 3. I normally use the CR10S Pro which is the one over here but it's quite a big machine and it's really noisy as well. The power supply is extremely noisy once the bed's heated up. Um, we are going to use this one for printing the LED light pipe on this device but we're going to try printing on here. So I've just put the SD card in and turned it on and I've already done the bed levelling the other day so we should just be able to go to print and we've got our file ring light beta and then it's going to take a little bit of time for the bed to heat up. It's not quite as powerful as the CR10S Pro so we'll leave it a few minutes for this to get up to 60 degrees. The filament that we're going to use is some eSun PLA Plus 1.75mm and I've had the best results with the eSun branded stuff uh, so I've got quite a variety of different filaments that we can use. When we actually do the final print I'll probably do it with some ABS or something like that so that we've got a slightly nicer material. So we're pretty much there with the bed heating that only took about two minutes in the end and then we should start to see the nozzle temperature heating up. And for this I'm just using the standard firmware that came with it. I will see if there's some other firmwares available. I am using a modified one on the Creality 10S Pro. Uh, but this one is quite a basic printer. It doesn't need to do any of the automatic bed levelling or anything like that. So really if it prints okay there's probably no need to modify that. And it looks like it's off to a good start so we'll leave it for a bit and check on it in about half an hour or so. Right so we're about two hours into the print and it seems to be printing really well. I had to make one slight adjustment to the Z axis offset so when I did the bed levelling I didn't quite get the spacing right between the nozzle and the bed but now that it's adjusted you can just adjust the offset with one of the settings on here and now it's printing really well and you can see all of the detail looking really nice. Uh, there's a few bits there that you can see where a bit of the filament has dropped in as it's moved across but that seems to be pretty standard. I see that on most of my prints on the other machines as well. And one thing that's definitely much nicer about this machine is the volume level. So on the CR10S Pro it's quite noisy just anyway but then when the power supply fan comes on it's like one of those server fans that's spooling up. And you can hear it from the other side of the house. With this one there is still a power supply fan that comes on every so often but it's nowhere near those volume levels. In fact I can sit in this room quite happily and just have this running in the background. So it's just finished printing. It ended up taking slightly longer than the slicer estimated so 29 hours and 23 minutes. 
but the end result is looking really quite nice. That filament from Eason really does give a very good finish and just seems to work straight off the bat. So let's get it off the bed and have a look at what it's done. So this is the finished print and all I did is stick the glass bed in the fridge for about five minutes and then this just lifted off really easily. And it's not too bad at all. The only error that I've seen really is that there's a little bit of breakout just on here where I saw the head move from this point here where the switch is straight across to here to continue the print and basically a bit of the filament dro drooped along here and that happened all the way up as well as on this hole here so there's a few little bits of breakout here which we can clean up but the overall quality is not too bad for a medium quality print we could go one step higher it will take longer but it can do finer passes to uh, really improve the detail now underneath is what we've got to cut out now so this is the support structure that i was talking about by having this this way down on the bed it has to print supports everywhere where there's going to be some material sitting on top. So for example, if we just printed all of the outside of it and then tried to print a surface at the top here, all that would happen is the PLA would just droop down into the cavity and we'd never be able to get a flat surface like this. So it has to print this support structure. And obviously there's some optimizations in the design that you can make if you're only ever going to get it 3D printed to try and avoid all of this wasted material because what we've got to do now is cut all of this out. Now you can see there's a slight change in texture around here and what you might possibly be able to see is there's also a little thin ridge all the way along here and the idea is that you can break it away but considering how this has been constructed I think we're probably going to have to go at this with some side cutters and just get rid of all of this material. So that's all of the material stripped out. It didn't take too long but it did make me realise there's a hell of a lot of waste there. So this sort of one part case that I've made may not be the best design because we've had to waste a lot of material just so that we can have this all printed in one go. If I'd printed the sides and then had a lid that went on top there'll be no wasted material whatsoever. So I may have to rethink that. Also, unfortunately, I did snap one of the bosses for the PCB, but it did highlight that I've set up the slicer incorrectly for this print. I wanted these filled completely and they're more or less completely hollow. So that's pretty useless. I do need to modify that. So let's have a look at how the PCBs fit in. So I've got one of the LED boards here and the idea is that these fit in to these sections here and then screw into the bosses and that does look like that fits quite nicely. I've got some more here and those seem to work quite nicely and the idea is that they are pointed inwards slightly so that when it's at 200 millimeters from the bench which is the height that it tends to be uh, with my microscope the center of the LED is basically pointing exactly at that point. Now it does look like I've gone very slightly wrong here these heat sinks were supposed to sit um, flush with the top of this bit of plastic here, but it's not quite. So maybe we can adjust the bosses, but either way, it doesn't really matter too much. And the idea is that the heat is going to uh, dissipate through here and then uh, out to the atmosphere. So through convection. So we can put those LED boards all in there. And those look quite good. Next up we've got one of the PCBs that we can put in here and I did export the DXF from Proteus so the general outline was taken from that. Let's see if this fits in. Yeah, uh, it fits in there. I'm not sure if you can see that though. Uh, there is actually a gap between the PCB and the bosses. It's about four or five millimeters off from reaching the boss and yeah, it looks like it's just fouling on this little bit here on these LED boxes on each corner. So I think what I'm going to do is just mark those up and then just cut them away with the cutters for now. But I'll modify the CAD so that the PCB uh, fits in there properly. So I've just nibbled away the edges there. I'll have to update this in the CAD. And then let's see if the PCB actually fits in. So... Yeah, that's pressing against the bosses now. Let's try one of the PCBs with the potentiometer and everything in there. 
So if we put this in, there we go. The LED boards obviously aren't fixed in place, but we've got the power socket on the side there, the power switch, and the brightness potentiometer. So that is basically in how it's intended to look. And then when it gets mounted onto the microscope, it's exactly as it was before, uh, sort of with this design, where there's going to be three screws. Those are going to go through those holes and hold this ring light in place. And you can just about see through there, there's a little white LED. So we'll print a clear light pipe just to cover that area so that we can see the lights on. Although hopefully you'll be able to see the uh, massive amounts of light that are going to come out of the bottom of this unit. So if you've got any thoughts or comments on how I can improve the chassis, then do leave them in the comments section down below. I'm obviously not a mechanical engineer, this is my electronics engineer approach to building a chassis. So I think it's not too bad, but uh, that's definitely not streamlined for the printing process because we wasted all of that material on the inside. And you can see the problem when it's all snapped away, you can see the sort of that crisscross pattern of the support structure. If we printed it the other way up to reduce the wastage, although it's not perfect on the top, although the lab lights make it look way worse than it actually is, uh, we'd have that crisscross all over the top surface. And I think it's better to hide that on the inside. But if we can reduce that even further, obviously that would be uh, really good. And it would also drastically decrease the printing time. Also, one thing that I've noticed, I do need to chop away this piece of plastic in the CAD because although it did sort of snap into there, it's now in there really solidly and almost doesn't need any screws. It's really in there quite solid. So if we chop that away, then we can actually get the board out. It does flex a little bit, but it's looking a bit tight and I uh, don't want to snap it just yet. So uh, I might have to try and ease it out some other way, but that's just another modification that I need to make. So that's another step in getting towards the finish line with this project in the next video. We'll have a look at uh, getting these driver boards up and running with all of these LEDs and we can give it a proper test run on the microscope. So thank you to Banggood for sending me that 3D printer. I'll put a link in the description down below if you are interested in taking a look. I do actually really quite like it because it's so much quieter and a lot easier to set up. It doesn't have to do all the auto bed levelling every time with the CR10S Pro so uh, I do quite like that printer. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, thanks for watching.